P had asked Chuck, is when Chuck was at his height, to do something, um, a compilation or something, or a concert or something. Chuck said, nah, nah, I ain't fucking that. <laughs> mm. So when Chuck was, <laughs> when Chuck was, uh, you know, at a standstill, he went to P for something, P remember that. Nah, I ain't fucking that. <laughs> he got popped with 10, 12 keys, somebody snitched on him, but we know who it was. Um, so we talking about a, a major pipeline. They asked, they asked them how the f y'all was getting all this shit in here. Cause it's through a train. For 10 years and we didn't know about it. Like we talking about, yeah. you that's, know. That's what the was asking. Fee was like, how the f that happened? We, we talking about some real plug shit. Mm -hmm. Now like I said, it's big boy the street side. This is nothing to do with music. You know? I was telling you the reason I started speaking on Chuck's name because I ain't hear his name a lot, you know, even from the artists, you know, it's like, nah, I don't know if it's business, I don't know if it's nationwide business. But you say artists, you mean the artists from Big Boy? They'll start the ones that like went to No Limit, they'll start with No Limit, and they'll just speak like if they do it, if they do an interview, they'll say, um, until recently, I can say recently to change, but before then, they do an interview where you started at, No Limit, New Orleans, No Limit. And I started noticing that, and I'm like, well damn, when's somebody gonna mention my, you know what I'm saying, Chuck? You know, how can you leave Chuck out of New Orleans history? Now, like I said, was it business, whatever, but let me tell you something. The No Limit thing, and I wish Slim was here to say this, to tell you, Chuck, the one who probably allowed that to even happen because you had a meeting, like a little, Street me, you know. They say if they want to go to No Limit or whatever. Now, for it's contractual, I don't know if they probably could have still went because of, you know, Chuck was in the feds, but you had dudes around, ain't gonna miss no name, f that. They ain't going nowhere. We gonna make them stay. They ain't going nowhere. No, ain't nowhere now. Nah, they gotta stay here. Chuck, real one, man. Chuck said, nah, man, ain't gonna stop nobody from making their money. Let them go. I ain't gonna stop nobody from getting their paper. Exactly what he said. I can't stop. Nah, man. Them dudes, them dudes go and get their money, man. So he let them out their contracts? Let them go? He just ain't do nothing. He just ain't do nothing. Just, I ain't, I ain't gonna do shit. You know, but you had other motherfuckers like, nah, give me the word and they stand. You know, shit was like that. Because legally, he could have went after them. Once, once they hit no limit, legally, he could have went after them for money, right? I can guess. In some, well, honestly, to be honest with you, I think he did get something out of no limit. If I'm not mistaken, man, I think some of the mystical albums, I think Chuck got something out of that. I know he definitely got something out of the job, if I'm not mistaken, you know. But yeah, Chuck, Chuck was like, nah, let's do get their money, man. And why were they going to no limit, bro? Because it was like most of most of the artists that was at uh, Big Boy ended up going to no limit, right? Well, you know, with the feds and all this here, P doing his thing. P hit hard. P wanted to sign him. Oh, so P had interest in, in, in uh, yeah. Chuck's, Chuck's office? Yeah, P wanted to sign him, dog. Mm -hmm. and, like, let them, let them go ahead and do what they do. You know, I don't even know if they know that, you know. But, you know, he was like, but you had other motherfuckers saying no. You had other, <laughs> nah, no, no, fuck that. No, don't do that. And that, and damn, man, because Big Boy artists kind of helped build No Limit. They played their part. They had some of the biggest albums. But did, you mention, did you mention why the artist wasn't mentioning Chuck's name? Or you just left it at that? I don't know. Right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they just was. Going with the status, going with the nationwide Hollywood shit, like No Limit is the one everybody knows, so I'm gonna mention No Limit. I don't know if it's that, you know, or you had a problem, you had, you had a problem, people called Chuck a shrewd businessman. You had people that wasn't, that was antsy about that. You had rumors about that, you know, um, not, not getting paid royalties and all that stuff. You had all kind of stuff about that, but they look paid, they look like they had a little money to me. I don't know. Say, if you had to explain Chuck's character, and him as a person, who, who was he? Street dude, man. Street dude about his money, hustler. The most, I, I, I'm gonna put it like this. In my opinion, he's the biggest hustler I've ever seen. 24-7 fashions on La Palco. He had a whole strip mall, it was all his. He went to doing it like that. Matter of fact, he the one started that $50 G night thing, you know? And crazy part about it, he went back to the feds because of that. Because um, of G-Nights? No, because he was going to New York buying the clothes, coming back, 
they wasn't real. The clothes, some of the clothes counterfeit. And I, I never forget, man. Now this is, I'm fast forwarding a lot. I'm, I'm skipping, but this is like 2007. I'll never forget. I come to the studio. I was working. This had a new, new shit. I said, Chuck, Fed sitting in the parking lot. He said, I don't give a f I ain't doing shit. I said, Well, Chuck, this is my last time coming over here. <laughs> Not coming back over here. I'm looking at him in the parking lot, right? And um, next thing you know, they came in there to grab some clothes. He ain't thinking nothing of it. He, he, he used to selling drugs. He clothes ain't nothing to him, right? Next thing you know, they came back and got him. And on the phone, he said, man, if I'd have known what I was doing was that illegal, I wouldn't have did it. They, 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 I think they violated his parole. I think he did another two years or something. So they called him on counterfeit? Counterfeit. Before the storm, before Chuck got arrested the first time, you didn't see him. When you saw Mystical, when you saw Fiend, when you saw G Slim and all them, you ain't never saw Big Boy, huh? Now, when you hustling like that, you know he didn't know his impact on New Orleans. He really didn't. So when he got out the feds, people telling him, man, you Chuck, you big boy. It got to him. Then he revamped the label. Then all of a sudden, you start seeing him on Fat Fat and all that with the $80,000 things and the shirts and all that. He never did that before. You know what I'm saying? You started seeing him on TV and Fat Fat and all that. So I think that what made him come after him. Cause they, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Once, once you put yourself in there. Uh, once he put himself the out there at first, you just knew the names. You never saw him. Bruce was a stuffer, man. Two's the crew, man. Him, Rat Man. All, all the people I knew from that was him and Rat Man. And um, him, Rat Man, Chin, and um. Mm -hmm. So they were the two's the crew, man. They, they were, they, they wanted, they wanted to be fucked with, man. Making money. They were hustlers and hitters, or it was just hustlers and hitters. And for instance, the pipeline came through old boy Chuck. That was his cousin, you know. Um, Chuck and Tuesday and Bruce was all about. So you gotta think, you got all these different cliques around each other. And sometimes they're a clash. Sometimes you know, because you had Chris in LA over here. Then you had do some Cali you hang with Bruce over here. Then you had the 17th. You had the West Bank. You had the East. All this under one umbrella, so no telling what each person doing, you know. So yeah, it was vast. One time, one time, Chuck told this about Pina. Um, Chuck said a dude, his uh, dude ain't gonna mention his name, asked him to you know, Chuck see about a car. And when Chuck went to the car, like it was Pina in there. Mm. Pina asked him, like he asked everybody. Wait, 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 wait. Chuck was Chuck was set up. To, to it, it, it seemed like that because he thought he was going to buy a car. He didn't think he didn't think he was going to see Pina in the car in the in there, you know. And when he went up in there, Pina asked him like everybody else, um, "Let's go for me," you know. Chuck said, "Nah, I got my own thing," and that was it. There wasn't no disrespect, wasn't no beef or nothing. That was it. Chuck said, "I got my own thing," and you gotta understand it. It was. It was like okay, Pina was a plug. But here's the plug too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, huh? Mm. Mm. And, that, and nothing followed that. Nah, nothing followed. Okay. Nothing followed. Cause it wouldn't make sense. It wasn't like he was he, he was going a little. You know. Yeah, nigga. Man, nah, I don't know if Pina. I mean, I'm pretty sure he understood because it was nothing after that. You know, usually, you heard about it was stuff after that with Pina, but it was nothing after that. It was just mutual respect, you know.